So today I'm joined with the incredible Alice, a passionate ocean advocate, shark guardian and founder and brainchild behind Ocean Kin. Alice fights for sharks and vulnerable marine species through education and action and has recently joined our incredible community of ocean guardians here at OCL. So I thought it might be nice to hop on a call, have a chat, learn a little bit more about her incredible work and how she works to create positive change for our oceans and how she helps give a voice to those that need it most. So I always like to start with um, people's earliest memory of the ocean. So Alice, tell me a little bit more about this for yourself. Tell me about this moment. Where did it all begin? Where did the passion stem from? So I I grew up going to Pembrokeshire. Um, my parents started taking me there actually when I was eight weeks old um, every summer. And I don't really remember obviously that, but I remember, you know, being very young, probably four or five and just wanting to spend all my time in the ocean. And um, yeah, we would go there every year on holiday. And then as I got older, I would take friends with me and I just remember, I just remember feeling um, really at home in the ocean. And I had this one situation, I was about 12 and I refused to get out of the water. We were staying on a beachfront property and my mum, my dad, my grandmother and their friends were all having a barbecue up on the, on the balcony. And all of a sudden they were all leaning over and pointing and like yelling and waving at me. And I was like, what and I turned around about two feet um, away from me was a seal just kind of hanging around looking at me bobbing around and I remember that moment really vividly because I remember thinking oh, I'd like to do this all the time <laughs> and never have to get out of the ocean um, so I'd say that's probably one of my my earliest really significant moments um, would be nice. yeah that. I love that so after that so th you were you were quite young then would you say that that was kind of embedded in you moving through school and did you always have a vision that you'd be working in kind of ocean conservation or is it something that developed later on in life how did that journey pan out for you so I've I've always been passionate about the ocean and summer was always my my favorite time because I knew that we were going to Pembrokeshire and I could spend all my time in the ocean. Um, but I took a slightly different route when I was 16 I decided to start acting and my original thought was, well, if I can make it as an actor I have this platform and I can, you know, I can be saving the oceans and stuff and of course those were thoughts I had as you know a 16 year old and of course as I got older I was like what am I doing I need to make this my my day-to-day -day life um but that didn't happen until I was I was 30 um I had quite a significant event um with my dad passing away and it just made me think life is too short to do things that don't fill you with joy and that feeling of waking up every morning and 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 having that deep passion um so yeah so I gave up acting applied to university started um studying biology and then the rest is history so and that was yeah that was when I was 31 so yeah when and how and tell me all about how your love for sharks began so it was it was actually before I can remember because um, my my mum actually showed me recently some um, drawings that she came across from when I was four and um, I had been drawing sharks. So, I mean, it doesn't surprise me. My dad was very much into nature and documentaries, loved the ocean. And so it was kind of a natural thing. But then when I was about nine on my ninth birthday he bought me a book on white sharks and I just I was fascinated loved them and then um I watched <laughs> I was in Pembrokeshire with my friend Anne Louise and my family and we watched Jaws and I must have been you know probably 12 13 it was you know maybe 11 I don't know but we watched Jaws and the next day I went out into the ocean and I was like, I'm going to find a shark. <laughs> <laughs> Which I don't think is most people's reaction to watching Jaws. 
um but yeah my friend couldn't get me out of the ocean I was like I know you want to find one she was like don't I don't know if that's going to happen Ali I've been in the water all day <laughs> but yeah that was probably my earliest was was receiving that book from my dad and you know I had no idea I was drawing sharks when I was three or four it was just something my mum told me so I love that so, and I love going right back to people's like earliest memories of how of often where that kind of passion was was began and where that stemmed from because I think it can it can say it can kind of tell a thousand stories I think yeah. um, but so let's actually talk a little bit about Ocean Kin and then we can go into some other questions because I want to learn a little bit about it in more detail so just go a big summary about Ocean Kin and where it all started for you and then maybe a bit about the successes that you've had to date um, but mainly why why you set it up. Okay um so I was just getting to the point where I was so frustrated um knowing the things that were going on around the world and happening to sharks and happening to the ocean and I just I was like I've just got to do it you know because you can you can push something off and be like I'll do it when the time is right and that time turns into a month into six months into a year and I just thought I'm gonna just do it I'm gonna just I'm gonna start it and see what happens and um so that was how Ocean Kin actually started it was just me sat there one day thinking about how desperately I wanted to do something to help and and make a difference for these animals and um and I was like I won't execute it until I actually have a name and then I was like I was lying in bed one night and I was like Oceankin and the next day that was that was it I, I started it because um, mm -hmm. people often ask me what it means and of course you know ocean kin means family and I you know I do believe that you know we're deeply interconnected with all of these animals and these beings and the oceans and for me it, you know they are my family so why wouldn't I want to do everything I can to protect them yeah, absolutely and that so did you kind of have an idea to start with a campaign or did you just kind of set up the idea like, this is what I'm dedicated to now I'm going to dedicate myself to you know ocean conservation in general and and all the other things that you've done or did you have something specific in mind when you set it up it was it was more general in the beginning and then it was when I started discovering the shark products and the shark souvenirs that I was like right this is a problem this is an issue um and that was that was why it became my first campaign I mean I remember posting about um Amazon and the shark products back when I first started Ocean Oceankin and you know no one was really paying any attention I didn't I mean some posts would get 30 likes no one would share anything and um so I continued my research and then I grew the uh social media for Ocean Kin a lot more sorted out a website and then executed the campaign and yeah it just it really took off um mm. which was is great um because i feel like it has it's put ocean kin on the map a little bit which um is really helpful for obviously future campaigns and um and the continuation of this campaign because it's certainly far from over at the moment yeah absolutely would you say when this kind of took off would you say the consensus was that people just weren't aware of of this being a product of readily available you know I certainly didn't think it was something that you could go onto Amazon and, and buy and why would it and where's the regulation why isn't there regulation were you did you think that people were quite shocked to find out or was it something that people were just turning a blind eye to and, and weren't really or, or not knowing how to action something like this so um in the beginning when I started talking about it to people I was met with a little bit of Mm, you're not going to get anywhere it's Amazon they're not going to listen to you they're a huge global company there's no way you're going to be able to get them to take these products down and I was like okay um <laughs> and but I when I really launched the campaign the amount of people who contacted me saying how shocked they were and really 
angry and upset. And I mean, you only have to go onto the petition site on change and see all of the comments from people of how horrified they, they are that these products are being sold, um, especially the shark pups in bottles, um, which they have now taken down. So that's been the first success. Um, thanks to the amazing amount of support, you know, obviously it's not just me, it's, you know, thousands of people putting their name to it and, and sharing and talking to people they know and sharing the petition and just making a noise basically. Um, but yeah, the majority of people were really shocked. Well, why do you think in your experience when obviously you've spoken to Amazon in depth and, and other companies, why do you think there isn't this regulation? Where, where does this where does this regulation come into play and how, how, in your opinion, can it be more regulated in order to ensure stuff like this isn't sold? Or is it kind of like a black hole and where do you start? What, what's your opinion there? I think the problem with Amazon is it's such a huge, huge company made up of so many small companies the ability for things to slip through the cracks is, you know, it's easy. And until these things are brought to their attention, they don't have the ability to do anything because they can't just look through every shop. And I understand that. However, on their terms and conditions, it does say that you're not allowed to sell animal products to do with um, dolphins and porpoises not allowed to sell shark fins but it you're allowed to sell shark teeth um which is the the problem i'm still battling with amazon at the moment with the fact that they allow the sale of mako shark teeth which as you and i know they are registered as endangered on the iucn red list so um and they are they are now aware amazon is aware of these products yet they are still refusing to take down the teeth so um that's another another reason why I'm, I'm pushing as hard as I am for this what would you say to people as well because I think it's really important that we do like you say it's it's easy if you like for things to fall through the cracks so if if there is something brought to people's attention or they see something online that they feel is completely wrong and against you know human rights or even animal rights where and how do they even begin to start complaining because it's a giant and you know do you, do you start a petition? Do you is there a process whereby you can approach them more genuinely and and kind of um, with an email, etc.? What's the process? So, for me, it was first of all it was contacting Amazon, them pretending to be very shocked and being met with managers and bots and you know given the brush off basically. Um, and so that's when I decided to create a petition because I thought if I get enough people behind me, at least that way I can put that to them. And then it wasn't until the petition garnered so much attention that the um, head of um, camp, the head campaign director who's based in New York reached out to me and said, I want to help you. I used to work for Greenpeace and this is appalling. And she managed to get the contact information for the global head of sustainability at Amazon. And then we contacted her and it, the email was tracked. She opened it. It was also shared about 59 times throughout Amazon. Um, and that's when the bottles came down. So uh, my advice would be, if it's something you feel really strongly about, don't give up because if, if everyone gave up, nothing would happen. Change would never happen. It's worth just pushing, especially if it's something you're passionate about or you believe in, or it's something that is obviously wrong. I would say just don't, don't give up, just keep pushing, you know, even if it's sending an email every day. And I know it seems like a lot, but you can just copy and paste the same email. I'll soon get the hint. Yeah, that's <laughs> great. So did the head of sustainability not get back to you? They just took the products down. That's crazy, isn't it? Absolutely. I never got a response from Cara Hurst. That's her name. Um, and I uh, then I reached out to her again. And so I will say I have never used any aggressive tactics throughout this campaign at all. I 
don't believe in slandering. I don't believe in getting aggressive because it doesn't help. It doesn't get anyone anywhere because you're always going to be met with hostility. Um, so I was always very, you know, encouraging with my wording, you know, be part of the change. You know, Amazon Smile is, is a huge thing for Amazon and they work with a lot of ocean conservations, including a couple of shark conservations. And so when they removed the products, I emailed Cara Hurst again and said, thank you. This is wonderful, really grateful. However, the Mako teeth is still up. And I explained why it was wrong and actually sent her the, uh, the link to the IUCN and um, I didn't hear back. So um, I think it's time for another email, perhaps maybe more strongly worded about the sharks whilst being polite mm -hmm. absolutely like yeah is there any way that you can obviously with it being the shop as well is there any way that people can go online you know like on ebay when there's a bad seller and you can report them is there any way that people can get behind that as well and, and kind of report the seller if you like so yeah i've put a link in my in my bio on my linked um not my linkedin my link tree which is on Instagram, um, for people to leave a review, um, because a lot of people did that with the shark pups in bottles, which really helped. However, you have to have a USA zip code to be able to leave the review because it is the USA platform. Oh. Um, so people who are in America have, have left reviews um, and I've been checking it periodically. And I don't even know if the reviews, the bad reviews are showing up. I don't know if they're, allowing them that's interesting isn't it mm. maybe i think we could look further into because i think that the more like you say it is about noise and the more noise we can make collectively um and the more we can do which leads on to my next question is what efforts do you think individually can be taken by people to help ensure the protection of sharks and further support ocean kin's kind of mission and vision is there anything apart from obviously signing the petition, sharing the content, any reporting, et cetera. You know, maybe if something, someone was to come across something, maybe they could send it to you, to you and your organization. Because mm -hmm. I know a lot of the time people feel maybe that they're not um, either educated enough, but they want to do their, their bit to help. And I think sometimes just an email or a conversation with someone like yourself can really give people the support that they need to, to move forward with stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. I would always encourage people to reach out whenever they want if they have any queries about anything um i would also say you know ask questions speak up if you go into a, a store by the beach and you see that they've got these shark pups in bottles talk to the owners of the shop talk to the managers let them know if you see shark tooth necklaces you know talk ask questions um and the thing is people some people I've, I've had a few emails saying, well, it's just shark teeth. Why, why are you making such a big noise about shark teeth? And I, I can't stress enough to people the fact that it plays into a much bigger problem. And when you have these products for sale under jewelry and homewares and what have you on Amazon, they are essentially saying that it's okay to buy these products, that it's okay to use parts from an animal that probably died in a rather horrific way, whether it was from being caught for meat, for oil, um, bycatch, or even from, from finning, you just don't know. There's no way that this animal is dying in a good way for us to get these teeth or jaws or or whatever else you know at the end of the day it results in them dying which is a bad thing so that's what I try and explain to people so I would say you know if people come across issues don't ever think that one, an issue is too small if you see a shop where they're selling shark tooth jewelry like say something you know you've kind of already addressed it but do you have any advice for people listening who want to turn their passion into action um I would say don't listen to anyone else around you <laughs> because there are so many people out there that are going to tell you to play it safe, to 
stay in the situation you're in because you've got a solid job because you you know you're doing this you're doing that um if you feel deeply and strongly and passionately about something there is no way that it won't work because of how you feel about it and because of how you will put your everything into that and if I'm honest I was acting for 16 years and never got anywhere because my heart wasn't in it my soul wasn't in it I've been studying and you know dedicating all of my free time into Ocean Kin for well Ocean Kin was last um October, September, and then studying was, you know, last, last January, I just finished my first year. And I've had more success and felt more fulfilled in that time than I ever did when I was acting. So I'd say, just don't listen to people around you because there's always going to be someone who tells you to play it safe, to not follow your dream or follow your gut. Because honestly, the more people that we have following their passions, the more change I think that we can create in the world. Love that. So let's go back and think a little bit about whether you've had any kind of um, inspirations, um, any books that have kind of led your thought, films, any kind of influences, anyone that's inspired you and inspired your thinking over the last few years? Um, well, I would say from um, from a child, everyone probably says this, who is in our in our line of work is David Attenborough. I've always adored him. I remember watching his documentaries from a very young age. Um, Dr. Jane Goodall was also a huge inspiration. Dr. Sylvia Earle, I think she's fascinating and, and, and just amazing at what she does. Um, in regards to books, I have so many. <laughs> I'm a bit of a book collector. I noticed that. I love it. I think you should have something on your website, by the way, that has your list and recommendations because every now and then I'll go to screenshot it and I'll, and I'll forget and I just keep meaning to message you. So you should definitely do like a highly recommended little page because I definitely look into that. Yeah, I mean, I've got so many. There's one that does stick out for me, which is by um, Dr. Daniel Abel, um, who is actually um, uh, a shark uh, biologist out of um, Carolina Coastal University, which is where I was accepted. Um, but I um, obviously I've moved back over here and I'm going to Swansea, but he's got a book about um, shark biology. It's called Shark Biology and Conservation. And I think it's a great book for anyone who is either in conservation and loves sharks or is interested because it's worded in such a way that makes it very relatable. And um, that would be my number one recommendation for anyone who's who's keen on conservation and sharks in particular. Um, other books, I would say, pretty much any book by David Attenborough. <laughs> I've got most of those. Um, also, Ron and Valerie Taylor, they were big inspirations when I was younger as well. I remember kind of reading about them and, and seeing them because, of course, they were the first, first ones to really spend time with with white sharks in the water um so yeah lots of inspiration and then kind of day-to-day -day people people that i meet mm. people that perhaps even aren't in conservation but just their way of thinking um and the way they present themselves and i just think that's you know that's really inspirational I, my best friend Anne louise she's a huge inspiration for me as well because she she was doing something she didn't like or care about for many years and turned her life around and um followed her passion and is um is a big inspiration so yeah how do people react um that you speak to more like friends and family maybe not so much family and close friends because they understand you but maybe a few kind of people you meet along the way when they find out that you're fighting to conserve a creature that might you know frighten them from pre-existing kind of opinions and uh, what do, what's kind of have you ever had any kind of reactions where they're going oh you're, you're crazy like what sharks are what's your opinion like what's your response to when people kind of say you know what I think is heavily endorsed by media and fear and these kind of people have this perception that sharks are man eating predators and eating machines and all of these kind of ref like references that we hear from the likes of media and yeah 
media is a big problem mm. um i have been pretty lucky actually um whenever i because i tend to wear a lot of sharky you know inspired t-shirts and uh jewelry and so always in hopes of sparking conversation um about sharks but the people that i've ended up talking to about what i'm doing in oceankin and what i'm you know studying they're always like oh i love sharks which is and then you're like that's great and they're like can i take the the website can i sign the petition um you know i've been where I live at the moment, when I talk to people, when I go into stores and stuff, and um, actually had a really interesting conversation with a guy um, who runs a bookstore up the road, and he saw my necklace, and he was like, oh, is that a shark? I said, yeah, and he goes, oh, I love sharks, and I've recently given up seafood, and I think we really need to work hard to conserve the oceans, and um, when I was living in America, I was met more with like, oh, Oh, sharks, really? Sharks? It's more when you say that you're a diver that you're met with the shark questions like, oh, but why don't you get scared that you're going to come across a shark? Or, um, and I'm like, honestly, no, I'd be more scared if I was diving and, you know, I never saw a shark in all the years of diving. Um, but of course, like you say, media, media plays into it and creates fear and, and, so many people don't know the truth and then when you say you've, you've been diving and you've seen sharks in the wild and they're like really mm -hmm. you know but weren't you scared it's like well no yeah. you know um yeah. and i'm not i'm not saying that obviously everyone should just blindly go out and just decide to start swimming with sharks if you don't have any experience you know it's um it's a funny one really isn't it because they are apex predators mm -hmm. and they need the utmost respect mm -hmm. and i mean i can understand the fear if people have only ever watched films and read the media and what have you and not ever looked into it i because the media does do a very good job of portraying them as terrifying mm -hmm. but um i mean when you think that close to a million people die each year from mosquitoes it's um it kind of brings it home and i mean for me you know and i know i don't think like everyone but like when i see a shark i just think how beautiful they are they don't look scary to me it doesn't mean that i'm going to go in the water and touch them and hug them because i don't personally you know really agree with mm -hmm. you know hugging them and stuff um i like to give them the distance and the respect that they deserve because it's their home mm -hmm. but i just think they're just the most beautiful animals. I, I you know, and people go, oh, but all those teeth. And I'm like, well, that's part of what makes them beautiful. Like, <laughs> you know, they're just fascinating. And, and like you say, what they do for the ecosystems. And of course, so many people are unaware of that. They're so unaware of this huge role that they play in keeping the oceans healthy. And mm -hmm. that's also something I talk about to people as well. And they're always, shocked and then when you say about the numbers of, of sharks that are killed each year for many different things that also shocks people mm. um but luckily i've come across more people that like sharks than not which is which is positive yeah that is good so what's next for ocean kin so um get these mako teeth down from amazon um, this year I'm going to be um, focusing on actually becoming a registered non-profit organisation. Um, in the future I'd like to do more on the ground work. I don't know what that is yet, we'll see, but I do have my next target which is actually Etsy. Um, and yeah, the situation on Etsy is pretty horrific. Um, in regards to shark souvenirs, shark teeth, shark jaws, shark skin wallets from blue sharks. Um, and I came across scalloped hammerhead jaws, oceanic white tip teeth. And I reached out to the seller and he told me he gets them from fishermen that kill them for meat and oil. Oh yeah. God. So I had it from the horse's mouth. I pretended to be a buyer and uh 
said I was interested in buying the, you know, the starter pack where you get, you know, five tiger shark teeth, a scalloped hammerhead jaw and a few other teeth, I think from, you know, um, I think it was from, a, was it a great hammerhead? I can't remember now because I was just so like shocked and upset and angry. Um, but yeah, a starter pack for a collector if you want to collect jewels and teeth and put them on your walls and stuff. And um, so that's my next target is Etsy because it's, it's a pretty sorry state of affairs on there. Um, but I need to, I need to get this wrapped up with Amazon so that I can use it moving forward. Because if Amazon takes down these products, it's going to be a really positive thing mm -hmm. because they will be setting the precedent for other large companies Mm. and to make them realize why it's wrong to sell these products and allow the sale of these products so i'd say that's probably going to keep me, bu me busy for the next 12 months i would say so 